Hey guys and welcome to our new Bikes and Gear video, our top 5 touring bike gadgets. We've been on the road for 11 months and over 14,000 kilometers now, actually in El Salvador in Central America at the moment, and we've had plenty of time to test out these gadgets and now know that we definitely don't want to miss these on our trips anymore. So if you have already seen our two bike review videos, then some of these gadgets might sound a little familiar to you, but that's why we're going to run through this really quick. So gadget number one, our feed bags. Actually we've only heard the term feed bag pretty recently, and we always called them bottle holders, so handlebar bottle holders. And essentially this is just a pouch, um, which we put on our handlebar. I have one, as you can see here. Luisa has two of them to store some more bottles. And the cool thing is, as the name suggests, handlebar bottle holder, um, you can just put your bottle in there. You have super quick access to it when you're uh, cycling. You don't have to reach down or anything to grab your bottle. You have super quick access to it if you have to squirt some dogs that are chasing you on the side of the road. And it's just super handy even as a trash bag for example just to put something in or keys or whatever even when you're cycling in the city for example this could be really handy and uh, yeah we definitely wouldn't want to miss these two things to um, pay attention to when you're getting one first of all that it's deep enough to really secure a big bottle um, and also that it has enough fastening straps to really hold it in place and secondly that it has a little drainage hole at the bottom um, which is very important that when it rains, obviously water will get in here, that the water can drain out. All right, gadget number two, our hiking poles. We've been asked about these so, so, so many times. And um, while most, most cyclists, touring bike cyclists, either have a normal kickstand um, or just a normal stick they found on the side of the road. We opted for hiking poles, collapsible or telescopic hiking poles, um, to use as kickstands. As you can see, I don't even have a normal kickstand anymore. I got rid of it uh, yeah, eight months ago or something like that. Um, the reason is normal kickstands with such heavy bikes can get bent, deformed super quick and in sand like this, for example, they wouldn't even hold a bike like this. Um, a normal stick would be really annoying to transport when you just don't need it when you're cycling. But these you just fold up, put across here, and then, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty much gone. And um, you can use it as a kickstand which holds in any, which is really stable, holds in any, sur um, any surface. As you can see with the um, wider bottom part, it just goes right in the sand and it's no problem. Um, and even you can use these as a hiking pole because it is a hiking or trekking pole which we did recently when we were hiking a volcano in Guatemala. All right, gadget number three. It's a bit hard to see, we'll insert a detail here. <laughs> it's our Busch und Müller USB-Werk USB charger which essentially converts the AC power from our hub dynamos to a 5 volt DC USB power. And you can see this comes in here. This is the USB port. And then I have, in this case, my lightning cable, but you can put pretty much anything on it. And then I can use this to charge my phone, which I can either put on my quad lock or just leave in my handlebar bag. And this is really, really good. Um, it starts charging usually around 10 kmh or faster. Um, and if after a normal riding day, say, uh, yeah, I don't know, 50, 40, 50 kilometers upwards at a normal pace of 10 to 15 or 15 to 18 kilometers per hour, your phone will be pretty much full. So this really works really well. Um, we also have a solar panel with, uh, with us, which we hardly ever use or pretty much don't use at all just because we don't need it because these work so great. And we also charge our um, GoPros from these, but um, we don't usually use them to charge a power bank or anything like that because that would take forever. Um, if you want more infos on how we charge all our electronics on a bike, we have a separate video for that. You can check that out up here. All right, next gadget is this little blue thing here. It's also a bit hard to see, but this is our electric bike horn. Um, it has a little remote, which you can see here, 
with a selector button because it has four different sounds, which we don't really need. We only need the, the honk and the, the actuator button. And this uh, isn't powered by air, for example, like some other bigger ones you may have seen, which only last for three or four honks and then you have to pump it up again. This one has literally, we've never had to recharge it. In 11 months, we've never had to recharge it. It's pretty loud, definitely loud enough for cars to hear you. And um, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, so that's also very important when you're cycling in cities or it's definitely good to have. Um, we've put the remote here. So when we're cycling, we can literally just tap it. And I'm just gonna tap it once so you can hear how loud it is. Um, so yeah, it's really quick access. We used to have it here, but then it's a bit annoying to reach, but this is just perfect. You can pretty much shift, brake, whatever at the same time as honking, which is really important sometimes. Okay, and last but not least, gadget number five, our mirror. Um, Luisa has a different kind of mirror, as you can see, it goes from here. And I have one that just pops into the side of my handlebar. And mirrors are just really, really, really important. Um, not only when you're cycling, well, of course, especially when you're cycling in cities or just on roads with traffic when overtaking and so on. But yeah, we are literally so happy with these to the point that sometimes we're walking and we look to the left because we feel like we have to look in the mirror before walk, turning left. It's just so in our heads that we have a mirror there that it just, yeah, it does. It's just we really, really, really wouldn't want to miss these. All right. Well, that was our quick run through of our top five gadgets, but we actually have two bonus gadgets um, that we want to talk about. The first one, I'll move my helmet here, is a really is a big thermos or a thermos in general. Um, we've only had this since Greece, well, which is already eight or nine months ago now. And especially in winter when we were, for example, cycling across the US um, and it was really cold. We were uh, using this quite a lot just to put boiling or warm water in it and it just uh, stays warm. Or even in the nights where our bottles were all freeze, it wouldn't freeze. So we would at least have some drinking water in the morning um, before everything started to thaw. Um, so a big thermos is definitely worth it. Um, this is one and a half liters and yeah, it's been absolutely great. But also now, at the moment, like I said, we're in El Salvador and it's super warm and super humid. Um, it's also nice just to have some cold water and water that stays cold. So yeah, that is definitely a big upgrade, no matter if you're cycling in super hot or super cold countries. And last but not least, a good light. Um, this is the IQX light from Busch & Müller, the same company that makes the USB charger or converter. And um, this is a 100 lux, so one of the most powerful dynamo operated lights we could find, or that there are, that, that exist. Um, and this even has a sensor in it that it not only turns on automatically when it gets too dark, but also that it, um, it uses a high beam and low beam, so to say. Um, and if it's very dark, it uses a high beam. And during the day, if you're keeping it on just as a daytime driving light, essentially it uses a low beam. So it doesn't consume so much power. So for example, there's more power left over for the USB charger. So this is definitely a really, really good light. Um, and we are really happy with it. Um, yeah, of course you don't need such a sophisticated light, but having a really good light is definitely worth it even if you're not cycling at night just for visibility and so on yes so those are our actually seven gadgets and um, yeah like I said we are really happy with all of these and um, we definitely wouldn't want to miss these on any of our bike trips in the future all right well thanks for watching now we're gonna go for a swim because it's super hot and humid here and I can't wait to actually take this shirt off again. And yeah, bye-bye. Hey guys, and welcome to our Bikes and Gear video, our top five touring bike, top five touring bike, again, top five 